This recording is part of a larger um, webinar that I did for NASIG. Um, the webinar itself is all together and, and actually slightly different than what's being presented here uh, in that it's um, probably going to be a little bit fuller, but I wanted to be able to provide a set of slides that uh, included small snippets of each section so folks who uh, look at them later through SlideShare wherever would be able to follow what was going on. So this particular section will look at the topic of MarkEdit as clustering tools. So MarkEdit at 7, this is a new feature that was added to MarkEdit at 7, as well as the Mac version and um, the Linux version. The clustering tools are not going to be as robust as what you're going to find, say, for example, in OpenRefine, but they were really designed as a way to make it easier for users to do some complex processes, either extracting data based on clustered data or to perform edits based on cluster data. Uh, clustering tools work against either mark data, the mnemonic data, or tab delimited data. So you can interact with and edit data in those sets. So where can you find the clustering tools? Clustering tools live either under tools, mark processing, clustering data tools, or the way I like to find them, I use the search bar, clustering tools and let it go find it for me because I can never remember when I'm depending on which version of our I'm working on uh, where the those things live in the menus. So this is the clustering interface. Basically you decide how you want to index the data for clustering purposes. So I have a small data file that came from a vendor. I'm going to cluster um, basically on controlled data because I'm going to look at the 100 and the 700 to demonstrate how you can update data within a set. So I will go ahead and select my file. File works on either mark files, um, mnemonic files, or text files. I'm thinking about adding the ability to work with, uh, I'm thinking about adding the, the ability to, to work with, um, to work with Excel files. I just need to finish uh, a process to that I can write data back in Excel format. So this is my clustering sample. I'll go ahead and import the data. So the tools imported the records uh, that it's looking at. So you have some options here. So the first one is to decide what you're going to cluster. So I've clustered all the control data. So I doubt I want to cluster the 1xx and the 7xx together because there are different concepts in that space. Maybe I do, but I'm not going to. I'm going to choose specifically that I want to cluster the 100 and the 700 fields together. I choose a clustering algorithm. I tend to use the distance algorithm, but there's the co composition coefficient. Fingerprinting makes the clustering much better. It allows you to find variations of things like uh, Reese Terry, Terry Reese, or uh, Terry P. Reese. The way that the fingerprinting algorithm works, it's designed to, to work a lot like the way uh, OpenRefine's fingerprinting tokens work. You decide which fields you want to cluster on, subfields, enter as many or as few. So I'm just going to cluster on the subfield A. And then I can decide whether or not I want to extract records. So this would turn on functionality. So instead of making changes to the record, I can extract groups of records based on the cluster. Or I can display, and in the display, I can display only the data that's been clustered, or I can display the entire field. And I'm going to display the entire field because that's what I'd like to see. Um, and then I can decide how I want to sort them. Sort them alphabetically or numerically. I want to see the largest clusters on top. So I'm going to leave it numeric. And generate my cluster and it's done. So here we have groups. And I can re-cluster the data if you want to see how that changes things. Or I can go back and re-cluster and have it change which fields are selected. So here I'll go ahead and show you what's underneath. So we can click on the underneath and we can see that there are nine records. J, M, J, E. Um, me, J, E. So we can decide if we wanted to um, that these all are the same person. I can say, you know, I want to go ahead and normalize all of these, and that's what I want to normalize it to and add. And so now those nine records that need to be changed will be shifted into the value that I just selected. I can go ahead and take a look at another one and say, yeah, maybe yeah, this is the these are the same people. So I want to do all of those. And I want them to turn in to look like that. And I can just go ahead and look at all of these, each one, and make the changes uh, as many of uh, as many or as few as I want. And as long 
long as I keep selecting items. And I can search here if I needed to search. Um, so let's say I'm done. So I've gone through my list and let's say I'm finished with uh, looking at the individual items that I want to process. When I'm finished, I click on process actions and then um, the output file and it tells me that it completed. Um, there have been 29 changes made, and that's where the data has been saved. And so now I can go over here and I can look at my clustering sample. And I can find, if I was paying attention, um, one of the elements that I had been looking with. And I think one of the mead, I think. That was right. Uh, yeah, so here, so you can see um, that if you look at his name, it's been normalized across the individual record sets, which is exactly what we wanted, what I told it to do. So this way, I can run um, clustered, run clusters, uh, and make changes very quickly. Um, I can use the exact same process on delimited files, and it'll keep the data in delimited format. It'll just update the spreadsheet, so I can um, process data that way. Uh, I can also like I said, rather than making changes, I could have said, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this, these authors themselves and extracted those records rather than extract, rather than making changes, I could have extracted those records. So I could have pulled a subset of that data. So obviously, if you use, if you're familiar with tools like OpenRefine, you'll find that the, the OpenRefine tools are much more robust. You can embed things like regular expressions, and you can pull data from external sources, and uh, do all kinds of cool whiz-bang features. The idea behind the clustering tools here was really to create something that users could doing essentially a set of point-and-click operations to work with their data files very quickly and start to expose folks to some of the uh, ability that you would have and, and some of the potential options available to you if you could really easily do these kind of clustered edits or extraction operations. And again, if you want to, I, I cluster data only on the control values. I can pick custom fields and pick the fields I want to cluster against. Or I could just cluster all of the data, and then when I get to the next screen, I talk about what I'd like to see shown um, in the output. I could just find the fields that I want to have brought together. So it provides you with, I think, a lot of flexibility to be able to do some pretty cool things that maybe were, that, that not maybe, that you can do in other tools like OpenRefine, but probably and actually not probably, but are in some cases outside of the expertise of a number of folks who have heard about OpenRefine but haven't had the opportunity yet to really learn how to take advantage of that piece of software. My hope is that tools like this will help to lower those barriers so that not only will you have the ability to just quickly start working with these kind of things, and take advantage of some of these tools and functionality. But as you work with them and start to understand what the limitations are, it helps to become a way to prompt folks to uh, maybe take that next step if they're finding that the, the functionality here is too limited to looking at something that's more of a full-featured uh, suite of uh, tools that allows for the kind of uh, really enhanced clustering and editing functionality. And, and if you do do that, uh, there are ways, because moving data from Mark and into OpenRefine and back can be a challenge. Um, there are ways using MarkEdit, there's an OpenRefine integration which would allow you to extract records for ingest into OpenRefine, bring those records back from OpenRefine into MarkEdit, um, as well as a number of other uh, folks who have, there are also a number of other folks who have posted some great tutorials as well as scripts that help folks do the exact same process, maybe even using different models for how the data is um, ingested into OpenRefine may make more sense for the kind of work that you're doing. But hopefully this gives you options. I think that's what we're trying to do is provide options. And so uh, hopefully that's useful.